And Mr. Sherm had said, page 15, that if a person allows himself to function and perform just based on his habit of performing, he will not be midagdic, he will not do the mitzvah with a deliberateness that you need and with an exactness that you need. Okay? The nimsa shame no flim bero beli rososo. And as a result of this, they f- he says, they f- fall into wrongdoing without being aware of it. That's interesting. You know, the Mishnah says that, you know, the Hasidim Rishonim, they would spend an hour meditating before they would say the, the Shimon Esrei. It would take them an hour to say the Shimon Esrei. <coughs> and after they finished, they would reflect for an hour over what they had done. So nine hours a day, it took them to say the Shimon Esrei. You do it three times a day. It's nine hours. Well, what's, what's, the, what's the, the hour in preparation? That means, again, to focus. To make sure that whatever is yeah, the mindset, the emotional state, and whatever is going to be done is going to be done perfectly. But without the level of preparation they felt, it was, wasn't sufficient. So before you do anything, you have to do it with a, a deliberateness to be able to do it correctly with the mindset, even in the, in, in the actual mitzvah itself. I mentioned the Chavetz Chaim uh, writes in one of his, uh, that a person, Shimon Esrei, he, he says, before you start the next bracha, you should pause for a moment and just think about what the next bracha was going to be, rather than just go immediately into the next bracha. It, has a whole, it makes a difference like day and night in terms of your kavana, the intent. You say, okay, now you're about to say atochone. Before you say atochone, stop for a moment, think, what am I going to say? A person usually thinks before he speaks, mm-hmm. right? If you do think before you speak. So if you're going to say, Atochonim lo das, before you say, Atochonim, think what's the upcoming bracha. Stopping and think about it allows you to, to have a different level of understanding what you're about to say. It takes on a whole different level of meaning. That's what he says. Even, even a moment. He says, this is one of the strategies. He says, the shrewd ploys of the evil inclination and his cunningness. To actually to burden Avodoso Bitvidus Bitvidus. What's Avodoso? We're not talking about the Avodah of, of the mitzvah. Just if things were burdened with many things. People's minds and, and emotions are occupied. A person solely mentally and emotionally preoccupied, he doesn't have the ability, the time, to reflect and to delve into what about he's going to do. To have an appreciation, what he's going to do, what it is, and what it should be, and what it should not be. Is because he understands the Yitzhah that if people would apply their focus and their minds kemat koral darkeim one second I'm not sure what kemat kot al darkeim They immediately would begin having remorse for the wrong that he had done. Right? Even person does tshuva. Well, well, first of all, when a person sins, what is in the tshuva immediately? Because you have, you know, you have every kippur to do tshuva. It's the reason, you know, what do you think they printed in the art scroll sitter? With commentary, and you have a you have a manual, and, and so you wait till then. Does, does it make any sense? Person has a what has an ailment, and it, it keeps festering, and you could they actually get, they get worse. You what you wait till the doctor when it becomes terminal. Mm-hmm. You, you nip it in the bud immediately, right? The Gemara says that if a Talmud Chacham, you saw his Talmud Chacham sinned at night, he, by morning he definitely did tshuva. Why? Because a person, if he's a, a, a Talmud Chacham. He definitely addressed it as it should be addressed because he has a sense. He has a sense, but, but it says Talmud Chacham. Now, what's a Talmud Chacham? 
Tamachochim is not a person who has Torah knowledge. A person who studies Torah. Right? Borosi, it's a Borosi Torah Tavlin. So the only reason why you don't do tshuva and you don't address it, because the Yitzhara, he burdens you. He occupies you. But the Tamachochim was engaged in Torah. He has, he has what? He incapacitates the Yitzhara. So therefore, if you saw the Tamachochim sitting at night, in the morning, he de- by the morning, he definitely did tshuva. Because of his level of clarity, because of his involvement in Torah, the Yitzhara couldn't interfere with, with the tshuva process, with his level of recognition to have sufficient level of, of charoto to do tshuva properly. But the average person who doesn't learn, doesn't have that antidote to what? To incapacitate Zohara. He still has the, he has the sense to leave the morning. He did it at night, and he'll do it multiple times before maybe. And even when he does the tshuva, what is it the tshuva? Mostly it's, it's lip service. This is the famous Mrs. Sharm. Hareze me ain't atzis paro rosha. This is similar with what happened with paro. Shoma tichbar avod al nosh viyasubo. Right, they began. There was work stoppage. They began complaining. So what he said? He said, nirpimim. They're lazy. They have too much time on their hands to think. That's the reason why you know they have a work stoppage. So you should actually increase the workload. Bal yishu b'divrei sheker, and they shouldn't have a. The desire to speak words of, of, of false, falseness. He didn't give a moment's peace. That they shouldn't even be able to have any sense of, 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 of solution or they should plot against him. He wanted to disrupt their, their emotion, their, their, their focus, that they shouldn't be able to reflect. Because with the unceasing degree of work, work a built-in mufsekus, which doesn't cease. There's a Rashi in Pirkei Ovos that says that Mishtamish be tagos cholaf, person who uses the Kesa Torah, he he deserves to be taken from this world. So Rashi says in Pirkei Ovos that if you, a person does a Tamil chacham, and you interrupt his Torah study. You interrupt him, say, oh, by the way, could you do something for me? Why? He says, because the moment you interrupt him, to get back where he was is not so simple. So the interruption, that's the interruption. Because you're getting him onto something else. When you get him onto something else, a person doesn't get back so quickly. Mm-hmm. Once told over a story of Rav Shlomo Eger. Rav Shlomo Eger was, was the most special son of Rav Kiv Eger. He recorded all his, the, all his response, all his his, his writings, his Kedushim. So Shlom Eger, he married very wealthy. He married to a very wealthy family. This family would actually, they were, they supplied all the, um, the clothing, the boots and the clothing for the, Pol- for the Polish army. Right? Kruka. Rabbi, Rabbi has a connection to this. So, <coughs> and initially he was concerned and that he he would receive a, ser- a salary from the family, but he had an obligation that when the um, the secretary of the army would come to the family to discuss how many uniforms and boots, what he'd have to he had to have to meet with him. It would be maybe a few hours a year, but there were times during the year. So Rav Shlomo was concerned it would interfere with his, his, his learning. So therefore, he, would re- he rejected the shidduch. He wasn't interested in getting involved, even though he financially he'd be guaranteed to never have a financial worry, but because he was concerned. So Reb, Reb Shlemeger, when he, he was a Rosh Hashiva, Reb Shlemeger, he'd give a share, he'd be involved in intense negotiations with this Polish person, the secretary of whatever they called, and the moment he finished, he would get back, he would get back exactly where he left off, as if he never interrupted as if he never interrupted said, how do you do it? With such a level of distraction, see, he says, when he, when he originally got involved in the Shidduch, his father gave him a bracha that he should be able to return immediately as if he never actually left, never interrupted his Torah. Mm-hmm. That, that's what Shlom Yegel said. That's the bracha his father of Kivegi had given him. But if you don't have that kind of bracha, what happens? You walk out the door, you don't come back so quickly. You know, I'm going out for a smoke. Right? Then what? Then it's something else. Then it's a drink. Then you go to get a, a diet whole wheat uh, wrap. Right, Howard? Well, what happens? Then, then all of a sudden you get a headache. You got to drive to Jersey. 
Of course, your medication is in, in, in the medicine cabinet. <laughs> exactly. Okay, we got it straight.